Hello, here is BB Walker. Welcome to my channel again. In today's video, we will take a look into integration between the Apple Studio and Yamaha keyboard. This is PSRS975 uh, keyboard, but this knowledge could be applied to any keyboard from the line PSRS and PSRSX. So, SX900, SX600, PSRS670 and more models, 700 lines and so on. Bas basically, in this video, we will be doing something which is called the integration with DLW, FL Studio in this case, but we, we can do it with any DLW. I know there is uh, some request from you about a Blatton and so on, but also some people in the last survey answered that they want to see more FL Studio. So there wasn't um, lastly a video about FL Studio, so today I will show you some stuff. And we will be working with the integration scenario number two. Please check the video in the description if you haven't watched it already. Uh, the video where I'm explaining three possible scenarios about integration. So in this case, we will use Yamaha keyboard, but it also be any external keyboard, hardware keyboard as the primary sound engine. So in FL Studio, we will be basically working with the MIDI out channel uh, type, MIDI out channel type. Um, I will also show you how to drag drums with fill up, fill down some the nice patterns. So for example, if I um, play this channel, you can see nice uh, at the end of the loop, it's a four bar loop, it's nice, you know, fill in. And all these drums has been you know, grabbed, has been captured by MIDI from Yamaha style called, uh, this style is called, uh, let me see, uh, 60s Rock and Rock. It was, it was in a video when I was uh, recording some songs in the MIDI and then importing into Cubase. Basically, in today's video, I would like to show you much more sophisticated methods of integration between FL Studio and uh, external keyboard, actually, because this is not uh, basic, explicit uh, stuff for Yamaha. Of course, you can get any keyboard that has a USB compatibility, USB MIDI uh, cable to work with it. So, um, let's start from some basics, super basics about configuration. Um, as you can see here, I got some setup uh, for, you know, uh, integration. If I hit play, for example, start, stop, this one, take a look what's happened. The Apple Studio already start to play the pattern. Moreover, I have also synchronized the tempo between uh, using MIDI sync, MIDI clock, there is a video about MIDI clock and Boss RC, but in this case I have used the FL Studio at the master clock. I was testing the opposite situation when the Yamaha was the master clock, but it's more convenient in my opinion to, in this case, to be the master, that DLW will be the master. So please check what's happened. If I press play and I decrease the tempo, it is automatically decreased in Yamaha. Please take a look in here. Uh, there is X on the tempo. So Yamaha is working as the slave in this configuration. And, and maybe um, what else? I, now I'm showing you the final result because in a moment I will start a complete new session in FL Studio and we'll do everything from scratch. But at the beginning I'm showing you what we have achieved. Another interesting stuff that we have is that um, I'm, I have uh, two selected voice now. On the right one I have 
Concert Grand, as you can see if I'm playing Concert Grand, the channel which is marked here by me, Piano Channel 1, is playing, and take a look what's happened. I'm only switching, uh, can you see it? Probably I need to move the camera a little bit. If I switch the voice to right 2 and disable it, the right 2 now is some strings. Take a look which channel is playing on the FL Studio in here. So it automatically split my MIDI input to separate channels. This is very useful uh, because in the standard configuration, if you're receiving all the MIDI channels from all channels, basically the selected channel will be recorded. Uh, and in this configuration, strings go to strings and um, piano goes to piano, the dedicated channel for piano. And also I have two channels from for drums. Uh, let's listen at the end because I will uh, disable this in a moment. This is channel 8 and this is how this is how the styles give the drums. Actually we are working now not with MIDI song pre pre prepared on Yamaha in this scenario we will work uh, as I said uh, the Yamaha is a um, primary uh, sound engine, but whole, um, let's call it arrangement, will be done in FL Studio and we won't use song, grab a song and do stuff. This is uh, quite a little bit different situation. Here we use a style as the basics. I mean the channels from styles, so the drums from styles, the voices from styles. We could, we, we could of course use another channel from up to from channel 1 to channel 9 is for us we could do a lot of other layers one by one uh, but um, yes we are working with styles so let's listen how it uh, you know it's at the end So this is basically a pattern with strings and piano and two drum section. Those hi-hat here are not used, they are, I mean, they are sample sounds from FL Studio. I was testing the latency, I was testing how the quantizing works, so it's everything is up. Alright, so now, um, if you are interested and you uh, you know, mm, you want to know how to achieve it, let's start completely new stuff from the beginning. Uh, first thing, we need to configure MIDI settings in the Yamaha PSR. So now let's switch to uh, PSR. Take a look in here. Um, Alright, so we are pressing function, we are going to MIDI, and this is my uh, preset for FL Studio. You can of course save uh, your own presets, mm, but to see, to take a look what is inside this preset, you need to press edit and go in here. And basically, um, if you watch my videos from quite some time and the video about MIDI integration and PSR, um, it was about PSR 670. I have mentioned that in PSR there are one input port, physical port, which is called digital keyboard in the FL Studio, and the second is called and and, and we got two ports for output. Uh, if you are interested how they are discovered by the system, we can switch for a moment to PC. Uh, we could go to options. We can go to MIDI settings, and we will see that. Uh, our uh, our keyboard is discovered by an input device, the digital keyboard, and I have marked it as port 1. And the output, we got digital keyboard, and I have marked it as port 1. And the second one, MIDI out 2, it also is from digital keyboard, I have marked it as port 2. 
to change the port mapping you just change the values why port 1 and port 2 because Yamaha uses this kind of mapping it's good to have the same mapping port 1 port 2 because you won't be confused uh, if configuring uh, ports and the great thing about Yamaha and probably other keyboard also is that we have complete you know control about what's going on with MIDI and we could route the MIDI data we could decide uh, which port uh, should trigger which notes uh, should the incoming data affects keyboard or just direct access the style uh, channels or the song channels and basically the reason why there is two incoming input ports in the Yamaha is that the port number one as you can see now I'm showing you called USB 1 and the port number 2 USB 2 I by the default configured and the following things if you take a look at the tabs and you get basically a tab called transmit and tab called receive and those tabs are you know um, used for make mappings so what if if we take an uh, and from the perspective of the Yamaha transmitting data is a data that comes out from the Yamaha and goes directly into FL Studio or any other DAW and what do we have let's go to the beginning to the early beginning right one is the moment and the MIDI note when you press the keyboard and you press the right one if you press it what's going on it will be transmitted to port 1 into channel 1 but this is in real time playing so if you do something uh, in real time live performance you are pressing and the right one goes to channel number one right two by the default goes to channel number two and left goes to channel number three it's very important to save these settings as your own settings because it 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 has to be you know compatible between you your settings in here and the settings in FL Studio. This is the default settings actually. I haven't changed it, it here. I have only changed the uh, tab system because in configuration, in my configuration, Yamaha is a MIDI slave, so it received a clock uh, from USB 1, and the transmit clock is of course disabled because we are receiving MIDI data. And this is how you could achieve the situation when in FL Studio you change the uh, BPM and the Yamaha plays that BPM. Okay, so transmitting. Let's go a little bit down. Uh, you can also configure here on which channel the song that is played back will be sent back to Yamaha. So if you have songs on Yamaha and you want to feed this song channel, the, the channel that comes from the song to into FL Studio, you can also configure it here. As you can see by the default is not configured. If you want to enable, for example, sending channel 1, uh, there are of course several types of commands in MIDI. A note on note off is the basic melody and chord so what you are playing and which well velocity there are control commands there are uh, after touch commands uh, program change and control change because uh, the MIDI in general general MIDI standard provides you not only not on not off but also clock of course and the other stuff like changing banks and mm, stuff connected with um, the channels uh, for example if you change the channel which is drum based uh, it will be discovered thanks to this control command so the Apple studio will know that this is drums and we'll show you the example in a moment let's go also to receive tab because it's very important if we are talking about the bidirectional configuration so in this scenario of course please check the, the this video i'm i'm encouraging you the, to this to do this again if you want to see this video about three possible scenarios um we have two ports as i said we get one port which is by the default reserved from mapping output from song and the second port and of course as you can see the song channel 
uh, one is song uh, channel, so song, song, song. And then we got the port number two. It's a output port from Yamaha to FL Studio that corresponds with several stuff. First is the keyboard. Then we have port two, channel two is responsible for write one, channel three for write two, and so on and so on. What we also need to grab some style, rhythmic parts, bass line, and so on. We need to know on which channel they are transmitted. And this could be set here. So port number two, channel number eight is the style rhythmic part one. Please remember this. Port number two, channel 10 is style rhythmic part two. And there we got as the uh, channels in uh, style is go. So there is bass, chord one, chord two, phrases, pads, and so on. Please check the video about Style Creator if you want to know more about styles. But uh, in my personal experience, it's a good way to make arrangement based on style. So you get some style from Yamaha, you get pre prepared drums uh, kit, which is good for this, um, this kind of music you want to perform, make an arrangement. Uh, of course, you don't you don't need to use the the phrases and the, the stuff that they have prepared within the style, but the voice mapping is here, which is pretty cool. Okay, so um, to debug all the stuff, what's happened with MIDI, you can see uh, here, receive. So if you press something, now we don't have anything, so... If it, everything is disabled so won't be playing anything because the master clock is external but you can see here which channels if anything will show up for example on transmit you can see if i now playing the channel number two is playing because this is right two if i switch to right one the piano is playing if i enable both of them these notes will be transmitted to channel 1 and 2. So this is what is transmitted, so coming up. This is what is received, so what we are receiving from FL Studio. Okay, so this is all uh, if we talk about the configuration of the clock transmitting and receiving. Actually, I didn't change there anything in, uh, except this clock settings, but I was showing you this to you know to know what now we will be doing so if to have the knowledge about those channels so if you want to receive more channels you have to do this okay so let's switch to uh, pc um maybe let's go to midi uh, on the let's go to midi um, receive to have some debug information like here okay and let's take a look to FL Studio again, so we got port number one, port number two, so they have the same ports. Uh, we also uh, have set the um, send master sync, uh, but it will be synced. Uh, sorry, it is not synced now because it's a new project, so I need to enable master sync and it basically uh, we'll send master sync to MIDI 1 or MIDI 2. Uh, okay, we can test it. This data, which comes now, it's probably style and we are listening MIDI. Let's, let's change the tempo and Yeah, the master is working, there was a little bit lag. Let's go to 110 maybe. So this is now what you hear is that if I hit the play in here, it sends the remote command play and the style is being played. This is thanks to these settings. Uh, when the, the transmit clock is of course, it shows on, but this is not true actually. Uh, because we got the USB one, uh, it means the sync from port number one. And and here is the settings: style or song. So if I hit 
it starts uh, it starts it do the same like in here so I could do this from here on I can do this from I could press play in Yamaha or I could press play in FL Studio basically if we have this option called um, it was in uh, MIDI here enable MIDI remote control enable MIDI output it will be automatically sent okay so uh, channels how to get for example how to grab drums from the styles that we want we inserting a channel called uh, the, the type of the channel called um, where are you hello yeah here MIDI section MIDI out and how it actually works um, I don't know if you are familiar with FL Studio in general or not but here we define uh, this is a type of a channel type of track let's call it maybe in this way this is a type of track in FL Studio that allows you to send MIDI data somewhere somewhere basically means on some port on some channel and the device where it will be sent has been already prepared by us uh, here in this MIDI out so basically port 1 it means send those data to digital keyboard port 2 send this data to MIDI out 2 which is port 2 or USB 2 in the in the naming space of <laughs> Yamaha so uh, and this is basically means that it will be sent to channel number one port number one there is nothing on the piano roll now but as you can see I can play and the saxophone is playing why the saxophone because we are sending it to channel to port number one and port number one receiving MIDI is song channel and my song in memory is the rock one and if you remember this song and this video where I was recording the song the soloing part was the saxophone so please be very uh, you know focused now if we send data to port number one the channel from song will be used the voice from song it's very important but if you change to port number two now we have grand piano concert grand to be specific and let's go forward if we change to port number three uh, sorry channel uh, two which is channel reserved from styles and uh, port number one is port reserved for song and we change to channel number two and go to piano roll again by pressing F7 uh, port two channel two hello yeah real why are you not playing real strings sorry uh, channel three so channel two uh, okay now I need to explain you channel number one in port number two is the keyboard which means the it actually means that they send data and simulate the playing on the keyboard and now my selected is right one so on channel now number one and on channel number two it also plays grand concert concert grand piano but uh, we want access the keyboard uh, keys we won't access the style channels so in this video actually we are working on the arrangement based on a style so ch uh, piano our piano let's uh, rename it piano channel 2 it's good to name it in of course it's my proposal uh, so it's channel 2 it's a piano 
not channel one, because channel one, if you address those MIDI data as channel one, you will, um, you know, send the, the MIDI to actually selected voice. So if you change it in here, if you change the selected voice, it could be another voice. And our, you know, uh, goal is that if you load the style and start the DLW, it should work with any m external additional configuration. So we address piano channel two to be sent or port number two, it's a port reserved for style and channel number two, this is first right one. The second one, we will replace this also to MIDI out. We change to port number two, which is port reserved for style and for channel number three. And we call it a rename, it will be strings, string channel, Free. And let's go to piano roll. Channel three, port two. And yes, the very important stuff uh, because we now need to set explicit uh, tracker for each channel. So by pressing uh, right two, uh, right button on the mouse, we go received notes from digital keyboard and channel two. We want, and this locker sh will show up and here we do the same thing. We go to channel and channel three. And now as you can see, magic happens. Of course, if I have selected uh, the track, this is what happened now is, if I'm playing on the piano roll, I get concert grant. If I'm playing on... Hey, why are you not sending? Maybe you are... Ah, sorry, <laughs> I have still on the piano roll channel number two. This is my fault. Now we get strings, so everything is okay. So again, uh, to summarize, I have configured port two, channel two, port three, channel two on piano roll. Everything is sent to channel of the style, not the channels of the song inside Yamaha. And thanks to this locker and to explain the you know, constrain the incoming MIDI data because by the standard uh, selected, you know, channel rack, everything that comes in from the MIDI input device will be sent to this. And this is not good if I'm <laughs> making arrangement and we have, of course, have the separated track for any MIDI channel. Okay, so now as you can see, if I um here, can you see it? Yes, I change from right one to right two. Why are you still sending me? We need to check what's going on because now I'm um 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 um. Port number one receiving. What is transmitted? Okay, so um, let's check again. Right one is transmitted to port channel one. Right two is transmitted to channel two. Uh, sorry, it was my mistake. Uh, because this is the output channel. So it goes to port two, channel two, but receiving should be from channel one according to this configuration. Now I am on, again, I am on transmitting part. So lifetime playing, right one, right two, is from the input device and the channel mapping here are as follows. So right one is channel one, right two is channel two. So by configuring this in here, we got go to channel one and here we got to channel two. And now let's check. Piano, piano, piano. String, 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 yeah. 
Sorry, so it was my mistake. If we are talking about MIDI coming out from Yamaha to FL Studio, it uses only one port because there is only one input port and then channel mappings are from one. So right one is channel one, right two is channel two, left is channel three. So this is how you will receive your keyboard in a lifetime recording. The another stuff is how to grab the beat, the drums from style. And as I said at the beginning, um, in the in the FL Studio, uh, sorry, not in the FL Studio, in the Yamaha style, the drums are on two channels. And by the default, they're on transmitted through channel 8 and channel 10. So we need, again, to prepare a nothing more than MIDI out, configured from port number two, because this is port that comes out, uh, if we want to send the back, of course, uh, and we will be addressing the channel receiving, let me, let me, let me show you, let me check, um, the rhythmic parts are 10 and 9, so actually the same like in transmitting because transmitting style rhythmic part is from port one eight. So there is, n there is no this offset. For rhythmic parts, you use channel eight and 10, both from input and output. So channel eight, let's rename drums channel eight. The second one, replace MIDI out channel 10 port 2. Of course, here is configuring output stuff. So if we record something on piano roll and it will be sending it back to our instrument, because our instrument is in this scenario input and output at the same time, we will have this drum patterns. Okay, and now I am... Um, mm, mm, mm. Let's do this pattern 44. One bar, two bar, one more. Like this three bar maybe. One, two, four bars. So it will be 48 quarter notes as you can see here. And now let's try to grab some, grab some um, style drums. How to do this? Actually we have external uh, synchronization and the FL Studio is master. Uh, we actually don't need pre-counter because uh, thanks to this that we have synchronization, if I uh, trigger arm the record and I will play, the style should be played. So let's try if it works. Of course it's fully experimental video so please <laughs> be patient if something is not wrong and uh, not right. Okay, so let's play. Mm, why are you not playing? Sorry, it doesn't. Uh, it 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 won't trigger me uh, playing. I need to trigger it from Yamaha. So again, let's go to piano roll F7. Let's delete those drums. And okay, you can see both. Can you see both devices? Yes, but I need to zoom out because I want to show you all the operating. Can you see my hand? Yes. Okay. So, uh, again, record is armed. We are ready. And if I hit play, but I won't be hitting it from FL Studio, I will be hitting it from Yamaha. And what does it cause? In the same time, it starts playing style and it uh, will uh, start recording in FL Studio thanks to this option remote, co remote control. So uh, we don't need pre-counter and metrom. We can try to do this. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, I was too late. <laughs> but you got the idea. We will do it in a moment for for the same time with grabbing fill at the end. But what's happened? And now. 
I have stopped the style in Yamaha uh, and I have nice loop in the FL Studio. Let's disable recording and play. This what you hear again, I mean this echo is nothing more than duplicated MIDI sound because it I'll, it I'll, I'll probably sending in the back and receiving, uh, but we could handle it in a moment. Now I want to show you how again, and as you can see, we are pretty good in tempo. There is no latency. I mean, ah, maybe we should quantize it for a moment, the, the slack in here, but next, it's probably by the MIDI clock, uh, there was some delay, but as you can see, it's pretty good. I mean, of course, this is some kind of, um, maybe it's intentionally, I don't know, uh, but uh, I want to have nice feel at the end of these four bars. So what I can do now, if you are not happy with your result, we can control A, delete all the, notes again. Of course you can program these great drums by your own, but that's not the topic for today. So again, let's record and at the end I will try to make some fill. So this is four bars. We are on variation. Let's switch to variation A. And because on the other parts we will record other variations. So one. Sorry, I need to disable fill in and I forget arming record. So again, recording. One, two, three, four. I don't like this intro. Let's record it again from the variation D maybe. Variation B is pretty mm, nicer. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Ah, sorry. I have started and I need to enable auto break fill in. So we start from B and the end of the day one two three four one two three four one okay so this is what we have we got feel in this moment but and here starts the uh, next um, variation we could of course using the selection we could delete this and leave only and 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 we could also uh, shrink our pattern hey where are you going here you are um so um, let's zoom 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 We could do apply quick quantize. I will drop them and let's listen how it loops works. So it ends here on my four bars. Of course, if you play more than four bars, it will be extended and then you can shrink it and uh, disable record. Okay, so we get our loop. This echo you have is this is because I have a um, looper as the audio interface and there is a feed in, but in your configuration, if you use a standard audio interface like Scarlett, this won't happen. Okay, so we get drums. Now let's record some piano. And um, okay, so we will be recording channel two. This is strings. Okay, I need to switch here to piano. Okay. 
and now how about how about live recording so let's go to live recording we got some loops of course the same situation if you want to grab more sophisticated loop or you just want to have one very long pattern with all the drums there's a lot of possibilities i'm showing you only the licks because it's a quite big topic as always <laughs> a lot of time all right uh, okay so you can see here 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 uh, let's enable pre-counter we got drums from Yamaha so we won't need a metrom I think but pre-counter will be uh, required will be necessary and we are recording pattern 110 uh, so let's improvise something one two three four <laughs> Okay, let's check what do we have in the piano roll, F7, piano. Oh, something is not good, I think, because we have some, let's switch to solo for a moment, I don't like it, disable record. <laughs> This is data from some channel one, but I don't like this. It seems like it seems like drums. So we have recorded again the drums that was sending back to channel, but it should not happen because we are sending drums to port to channel eight, which is you know feeding style. Here is uh, send another, but um, this locker should sh make sure that we want um, we want record on this anything except the channel number one from input port uh, let me check the input again if there is something wrong with transmitting channel um, okay let's try to see but this situation should not occur but let's do some experiment let's delete it for a moment <laughs> Hear the style. Okay, the style is playing probably. And what will happen if I disable the style? Okay, so, okay, a quick um, explanation what actually happened. As you can see, I have selected solo for only piano, and some drums are playing. Those drums are not those drums. Those drums you have heard in a second was the drums from here. So, because that's a quite awkward, because moment ago, if I hit in the record and play, the style wasn't playing. Um, and in this moment, it starts playing, so it's a quite different. However, to fix this, I have muted for a moment the channels responsible for rhythmic parts in a style. It's a very common trick that I have done in a lot of my live performances. For example, if I start synchronized track and I'll be making some intro and then I'm entering with drums uh, from the style. But it styles, uh, the true fact is that the style is playing in a background, but it has disabled. And let's take a look what's happened here now. I got pure solo piano and now this drums comes from FL Studio so it's 
it's okay. It's okay, uh, but you need to be aware that in playing, those both drums are not the echo sounds from the uh, audio interface I ha I, that I have thought uh, seconds ago, so it wasn't true, it was my mistake. This duplicate sound, this duplicate drums is those is those loop back that is sent and back. However, allow let's disable it for a moment in a style uh, because um, my goal is to record something let's record strings so I switch to write 2 on Yamaha I'm switching to write 2 on Yamaha and let's record with this piano as our backing as our you know rhythmic so pre-counter Maybe enable metrom. One, two, three, four. There was a mistake in a recording, so please be second. We need to fix it or record again. Maybe let's try to see on piano wall where, the, where this mistake was made. Not recording. Strings and piano. Here you can compare the chords that I have played in first take and second take. So, where is this mistake? It was D major, C, G, and second, C, C. And, and I have played A somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's try to find and investigate. Okay. Ah, okay, here you are. So editing. This is cool if we are talking about editing in MIDI. This pattern is too, uh, too short. Okay, show me the land. Yeah, we need to increase it because it ends actually here. G on the bass line, A, and here should also be the E chord, so E is okay, C, they are, oh no, <laughs> sorry, here is also bad chord. <laughs>
pí, áno. Sorry, I was fixing strings. OK, I completely messed up with this. I was changing bad chords. But as you can see, this is cool for, you know, debugging. So... So what can we can do? Another possibility. We are selecting everything on the second part. And... We delete this. We are on strings now. But also I got this, which I don't like. Mm, okay. So let's copy this into clipboard. And... Quantize it, quick quantize strings and quick time to quantize piano, and let's see what will happen. Channel on off song, channel on off style, disabled, play. Solo. Okay, now we have solo. As you can see in a moment, I have disabled because I was disabling wrong channels. Okay, and as you can see, there is another mistake error. We should fix it um, we should move some of this uh, fill some of this fill uh, from this moment to the last here and here in this place we could control copy and paste again Here I got duplicate notes. Oh, sorry. Hey, you. This duplicate notes is... You are so disturbing. So as you can see, we could extend the patterns. We could do a lot of things thanks to DLW software, of course. Okay, so we are now after quite some times, some time. So you get the basics. I mean, I, I think more even than basic. So this is scenario number two when we are extending the possibilities of edit inside the DLW software. But in every case, we use still uh, the instrument as our primary device. So drums, strings, everything is from here. Uh, I am showing you again this was disabled by the channel on off of style not in the song so you are pressing channel 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 until you find channel style and to disable it you won't have this echo recorded back because if you hit play or record then it plays it back uh, so it is actually a tip how you could uh, you know avoid uh, being recorded with within the one track and other uh, tracks from styles which is played automatically okay i think it's all for now if you have any question about this kind of work or you just want more work like this or you have some problems uh, please give me a comment we can make a discussion so thanks for watching it was bb walker and see you later in another tutorial episode and in the comment please give me uh, your favorite name of your dlw which you prefer more fl studio ableton or cubase those three i have in my pocket so i could make videos about them see you later good luck